Um, honestly, <laughs> and I know some people are gonna be like, that sounds crazy. It is kind of cathartic to get this out because I cannot tell you how much of this has been internalized um, since 2020. Also, I don't wanna seem like a cautionary tale to other women or to men for that matter, but to my sisters, to my ladies, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter. If something does not sit right with you, investigate it. Um, I cannot stress that enough. If just one woman watches these videos and she's like, you know what, some don't sit right with me. Let me look into this. Um, then it was worth it. Yes, it is a Lifetime movie. Yes, it is Netflix. Yes, it is crazy. Yes, it is hilarious also. Um, and I understand all of those reactions. As someone who lived it, um, it was traumatic. But I feel like, God, it feels good to finally admit um, the, what the fuck I went through. And again, by the time this is uh, uploaded, I'm only to January of 2021, right after getting married. So when I think back on it, there's things that I'm very, very grateful for. Um, there are things that I'm just like, why, why did you not pay attention? Why did you not question? Um, and the sad part is I can't even begin to tell you, I don't remember the woman I was before I met that man. I don't remember. Um, because going through something like that, it changes you. And I've seen some women in the comments who were like, I was married to a habitual liar. I was married to a pathological liar. My baby daddy's a pathological liar. And my heart goes out to them because until you have dealt with someone so depraved, you you really don't quite know how bad it can get. Um, so I'm fully aware that this was a risk, putting this out on social media, telling my story, my truth, and really kind of being like, look, this is, this is what I went through. I made dumb decisions. I overlooked things I should not have overlooked. I argued away things I should not have argued away. Um, I can pinpoint exactly the moment I should have left. I still feel like God is sitting on the throne and he's like, I never planned for your monkey ass to marry him. I never even planned for you to go out and date with him. That's why I blew your tire. But you hard headed and you went anyway. And then I tried to go ahead and show you signs. You ignored them. Like, I feel like God did everything to help me as his child be like, this is not who I created to be your, your helpmate. And I was like, God, you taking too long. I want to get married. You taking too long. I want to have a family. You taking too long. And these are the consequences that I'm paying for basically telling God you took too long. And um, I feel like God's grace is sufficient. It is. But at the same time, and I'm not perfect. I mean, not perfect at all. None of us are. But I do feel like when I sit back and I replay the events that happen, I truly cannot believe that was my story. Because all I wanted was to meet a guy, for him to be my best friend, for us to get married, have a family. I wanted someone I could make fun of his big old forehead and he'd make fun of my nappy head and all my wigs. And yet he was my ride or die. Um, I wanted someone that I could be like, man, help me with these kids. And he helped me with the kids. We had a nice home. We were comfortable. That is what I wanted. And I said this before and I say it again. I truly thought, I truly hoped it was my turn. You see the women who are, you know, so happy and, um, you know, they're in these loving marriages and life just looks good. I really, really wanted it to be my turn. And so I excused away a lot of stuff that I hope the next woman who sees this does not excuse because I don't wish this on anybody. I don't wish this on anyone to feel the way I felt the moment I discovered the whole truth. Um, so I just wanted to say that because I think it's important to try to answer the, why is she posting this? Honestly, I was tired of holding it in. I was tired of holding it in. Um, and I hope it helps somebody. So for context and just to clarify some stuff going forward, I'm going to now call my ex-husband. I'm going to use the name that I call him in real life. Um, so that way it clears up the whole fiance, boyfriend, husband, ex-husband thing. So his name is Legion. Anyone that knows me will tell you that is what I call him. So Legion and I, when I left off at part uh, 16, um, or excuse me, part 15, Legion and I got married January 5th of 2021. For the first two weeks, things were fine. Um, we got into like a, a routine, basically. I would go to work, he would go to work. Um, he was still leaving the house at around 6.15 every morning. He was still on the phone with his brother, the one that lived in Philly, um, every morning. They would just, that was their time to talk. From what I was told, the brother got off work, I guess he must have worked the third shift. And so he was getting off work as Legion was getting ready to go to work. So that was the perfect time for them to talk. He would talk to um, his brother in Baltimore and the brother in Augusta, pretty much, you know, just a quick phone call here and there, if not every day, every other day. So everything was pretty much the same. I would talk to my mom almost every day. I would talk to my aunt almost every day. Um, so it was, it was nothing to kind of, hmm, that's weird. Um, that's what the morning routine was. He would talk. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and I said this in a previous video, but again, there were things I said in previous videos that I remember saying, hey, remember that because it's gonna come back later. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. I had been working there for almost eight years, seven or eight years by the time Legion got into the picture. 
he was fine with the fact that I worked um, within law enforcement. I'm not a trooper. I'm not a sworn officer. I'm a civilian. However, he, um, again, his dad was a retired police officer. So he was perfectly fine in the beginning with the fact that I worked for Georgia State Patrol. Um, he had been to my office before. He had met some of my um, coworkers, obviously, even with COVID, because I still had to go into the office two or three days a week. He had been up there. So the friend who took me to the hospital when I had my miscarriage has met him. He and I have been to her home with her and her significant other before. So again, even in the world of COVID, when there were little times where you could get together with people, he has met people in my life. He has met um, my friend or that particular friend, and he has met some of my coworkers. So when we got married, the first two weeks, like I said, was fine. And then it's as if something snapped, um, something just changed. What was totally acceptable before, suddenly little comments were made. Why are you wearing that to work? You get off at 3.30, so you'll be home by five, right? Things that had never happened before. He had never questioned what time I'm gonna be home. Um, really, he didn't need to question it because when I'm off work, I, I leave. So it was never a situation of, oh, I'm just sitting around at work and just run my mouth because I have nothing to do. Um, and then it turned into, you know, he would call me every day from work. And I'm going to demonstrate how those phone calls went, but he would call me every day from work. And if he even so much as heard a male voice in the background, he would have little comments to me. Who's that? Are they in your office? You know, man, you know, I never know who's who's around you because it seemed like every time I call you, I have a hiccup, sorry. It seems like every time I call you, um, there's some man around. And I'm just like, you know, at first I kind of shrugged it off. I laughed it off because it really, truly was absurd to me. Um, but then it became a bit more frequent. And so I really just didn't feed into it because I'm like, I don't know if this is some insecurity. I don't know if this is jealousy because nothing has ever been done to make you feel any sort of insecure type of way. I've never entertained another guy. I've never flirted with another guy. Like, I don't know where this is coming from. So it is also important to note, we got married January 5th. Things started changing um, around two weeks later. And the reason why I know it's two weeks is because I had recorded an audio diary on January 21st is the date of the audio diary. And I talk about how maybe I had unreal unrealistic expectations because it seemed as if things were changing with he and I. So two weeks pass, he starts making little comments. End of January comes, he informs me that he wants to start looking for a house again. I had no real desire to go through that process. So what he decides is that he's going to look for a house for us using his friend, the uh, realtor, the one I did not meet. So he tells me that he and his friend have been talking and he's going to start looking at houses. And what he's going to do is basically, if he feels like it's a house I would like, then he wants to show it to me because he feels like, you know, I know that your attitude really isn't, you're in the mood to look for a house. So I'm going to start looking. And then if I think it's a great house, then, you know, you can come see it. Um, and I remember thinking, that's not like, that's not going to work. You're not going to choose a house without me. He was like, no, I'm not going to choose a house. But I just think that, you know, me and old boy have been talking. And so he has some houses that he is representing. He wants to show me. So why don't you let me look at it? And if it's worth the time, then I'll bring you to look at it. So he already had some sort of plan in place after talking to his friend um, about how he's going to start looking at houses. This is, Jan this is the end of January 2021. So I kind of threw my hands in the air and was just like, whatever, because I'm not getting emotionally involved in looking at houses. And for me, that's kind of what it was. I felt like I would see a house, I could picture us living there, and then it gets snatched away somehow, some way. I didn't want to go through that. So the reaction that he wanted, which was for me to throw a fit, I did not do. I was just like, okay, all right, like I trust you. Um, and remember that I said the reaction he wanted, because that's going to come back later. So he started looking at houses. <sighs> Funny enough, the houses that he looked at, none of them I actually saw. But he would call me and say, I'm at this house in Sandy Springs with the uh, realtor friend, he, apparently his realtor, his realtor friend's name was Scott, not to be confused with the other Scott, the one that was actually helping us that dropped us as clients. I want to make that clear. There were two Scots. One is the realtor who was representing us, who said, hey, I need proof of funds. If you don't have those proof of funds, I cannot show you any more houses. The other Scott is his friend who he had talked to on the phone at least 50 to 100 times in front of me. That's, that's the Scott that he said is going to show me this house in Sandy Springs. Um, apparently the house was like $800,000. So he was like, I think that um, if I, you know, if I like the house, then I'm gonna bring you out here so you can see it. All right. So he starts looking at houses in Sandy Springs, Alpharetta area with his friend, Scott. Um, I did not see any of these houses. I did not go. I didn't want to go. Um, so what was starting to change is, remember I said before, he would leave the house every day at around 6.15. He would be home every day between 3.30 and 4 o'clock without fail. It was so I shouldn't say it was annoying, but it, I could set my clock by the fact that I would hear that garage door open between 3.30 and 4 o'clock every day that he went to work. Even during lockdown, he still had to go to work. His job was only locked down for maybe a week. Um, for me, I was allowed to work from home, but unfortunately, I I did not handle it well. And so I would fall asleep and not check emails. So my boss was like, yeah, you're going to have to come back to the office because you're not trustworthy. And I wasn't. I mean, I totally, I would watch Netflix and not even be on my computer. So I had to start going back to work every day, five days a week. Um, and I was, <laughs> me and another lady were the only two in there because we were the only two who did not handle work from home properly. Anyway, that's another story. So Legion would, he started to not come home by four o'clock. He started to come home five, five thirty, six, six thirty, sometimes seven o'clock because he was saying that he was um, looking at houses after work with his friend Scott. 
So it definitely was noticed that things are changing. Um, and I just, at this point, kind of emotionally and mentally, I was just like, I don't know what to do. This is the end of January. Remember, I told you in part 15, I got married January 5th. By January 31st, I kind of knew I was in trouble. And by the end of January, sure enough, I knew things were changing in a way that I was like, I hate to sound redundant, but what the fuck is going on? So he's still maintaining the story of looking for a house, looking for a house. I had already let him know my lease is up in August. When my lease is up in August, I am moving to Cobb County. Um, <laughs> and my attitude is kind of like, you can go with me or you can stay here. I don't care, but I'm moving. I'm leaving Clayton County. The reason why I want, I was so adamant to move was not because of Clayton County. It was not because of the house that I was in. It was because Legion had started to create this narrative that he was beefing with my female neighbor. He was trying to get me to believe that my female neighbor to the left of me um, somehow was interested in him. And so she would make these little comments and he would come in the house complaining about her and her music and the fact that she had, you know, different men over to the house. It was driving me crazy. And all of this was kind of starting in January. So when I say that, it really seems like we got married January 5th and then we had two weeks of peace. And then something just snapped. I literally mean something just snapped. So he's looking at houses. Now we're moving into February. February obviously is my birthday month. Um, he did good. He did good to make Valentine. He went all out for Valentine's Day. He went all out for my birthday. My birthday and Valentine's Day are February 14th and February 15th. So um, he went all out on both days. <sighs> Y'all ain't even gonna believe this story. But I said I would share even when it makes me look bad. So the weekend after my birthday, and what I mean by that is if my birthday was on a Tuesday, we're talking about Saturday. Um, the weekend after my birthday, he gave me money to go to the nail salon, go get a manicure and pedicure. So I leave the house. I take his car. His car was in the driveway. We had a key to each other's car because, again, we're married at this point. We're talking February 2021. So I take his car and I drive to the nail salon over in Morrow. I'm in the chair getting a pedicure and I get a text message from my husband saying someone was just at the house looking for you. And I'm like, who was looking for me? What do you, well, who was it? And he said, I don't know. I think it was some, this is through text. I don't know. I think it was some dude you used to mess with. Okay. Um, I was like, what are you talking about? He's, and he was like, I'm telling you, some guy just came to the house looking for you. I told him you were not here. So at this point, y'all, I'm in the chair at the salon. I'm freaking out because I'm like, who the fuck has the audacity to come to my home unannounced, uninvited, talking about they're looking for me, especially because before I met my husband, I was working, I was working the last shift at Amazon as a part-time job. So I had not dealt with, dated anything with anyone for about a year before I met him in March of 2020. So I really was like, who the hell is this coming to my house? So I finished the pedicure. I head home. Once I get home, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? What happened? And so I'm, frazzled in a way and he's calm he was like yeah it was a black dodge charger they pulled into the driveway they backed in they backed in as if they had been here before so clearly this was someone who who who's been to your house he got out the car he said i opened the door and i went out there and i said you know is there something i can help you with and he said the guy said i'm looking for and gave him my name and he said i'm sorry she's not here and he said he was like oh okay um all right then and just got in the car and drove off and i was like my brain stopped working because I'm thinking, who the heck could this be? A Dodge Charger? I was like, are you sure that it wasn't law enforcement? Like, was it the sheriff's office trying to serve me with a lawsuit for a credit card I didn't pay? He was like, no, he was in regular clothes. He was like, and it was not a, um, a, a police car. It was on a marked unit, basically. And so I'm just like, who the heck could this be? And he was like, I know who it was. And I said, who? He was like, I think it was your ex. I said, what ex? He was like, the one that you had dated for two years. Remember back in like part three, part four, I told y'all, he told me about his ex. I told him about mine. I thought we were being honest with each other. So now, fast forward to February 2021, and he's telling me, yeah, I think it was the ex that you had been dealing with for those two years before you met me. I said, so you think that he showed up to the house uninvited after two years? And he was like, well, whoever it was clearly was comfortable pulled backing into our driveway, getting out the car, and was like, I'm here to see, and gave me gave him my name. Um, and so he was like, she's not here. Is there something I can help you with? And the guy was like, nah, nah, it's cool. Um, and they just got in the car and drove off. So, uh, again, brain is like, who, who could this be? So then Legion says to me, you know what? The way that you react into this is real suspect. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, you over here freaking out. I told you I took care of it. I told you it was fine. And you over here freaking out, which makes me wonder, what, are you, what have you been up to? So he says to me, the way you're acting is real suspect because I told you it was fine. I took care of it. He was like, I ain't even worried about it. He was like, obviously that nigga didn't know that you now married, that you've moved on. And so now he knows it. But for me, it was the fact that I don't do, I don't do pop-ups. Don't come to my house unannounced. So if someone has done that, for me, it, it automatically feels like a violation and it feels like it needs to be addressed. So it was not as simple as, I already took care of it, it's fine, let it go. Nah, we ain't letting nothing go because you don't have my permission to show up to my house. And before this turns into something where I'm gonna be on Fox 5 News, I need to address that with you because that is not okay. So he didn't like the reaction I had to the story he told me where someone basically disrespected my home and he felt like my reaction was really suspect. So um, what I'm, I'm 
get into the little details that he did not know about. So he tells me again, it was a black charger, a black Dodge charger. They backed into the driveway. A gentleman got out of the car and he asked for me by name and Legion said, she's not here. So, um, I asked him, what does the guy look like? And he said, he was like, why does it matter? I said, what the fuck does he look like? So Legion proceeds to give me the most generic description you can give. He was like, well, um, he was shorter than me. Ex-husband is about six, three, six, four. He was shorter than me. Um, he was brown skin. I said, did he have a hat on his head? Mind you, I understand that before marriage, I was a damn fool. I understand that. But every woman has that moment where you only gonna fool her but for so long. And eventually stuff, puzzles start coming together. For me, I felt like moving into marriage, certain things started coming together. So I said to him, um, did he have a hat on his head? He was like, no, nah, he wear a hat. So in my mind, I'm mentally going down a list of every possible man it could be. Um, and it was only like four men. I had been in that house about three or four years at this point. So I knew all of the people, and I'm talking about from maintenance down to ex-boyfriends. It was a total of like four men. So when he said that um, it was a black charger, I immediately was like, okay, I know that crosses out one. He said he was shorter than him. All of them were shorter than him. I said, did he have a hat on his head? He said, no, that crossed out one because one in particular was a maintenance guy who always wore a hat on his head because he had like a bruise or something and he, he was just self-conscious about it. So he always wore a hat, at least two. So I said, was he muscular or was he skinny? So Legion's getting all frustrated. I said, just answer the question. He was like, well, he was kind of in between. And I said, okay, um, he, he was in between. I said, so was he light skin or was he dark skin? He was like, I told you he was brown skin. I said, was he my complexion? He said, no, he was, he was brown skin. That eliminates one, so now there's one left. And yes, the one left would have been the ex that I had dated for two years. And so he was like, I know that I know it was your ex. I know it was your ex. And I was like, that don't make no sense because the ex that I, in my mind, I'm saying this, the ex that I had dated, he and I had no contact with each other. And he was not the type to just pop up at your house. That ain't his style. Not to mention, and I ain't tell Legion this, that man would not be caught dead driving a Dodge Charger. He hated Chargers because he drove it as a patrol car. So I didn't say anything. I just was like, that's, that's weird. So what Legion didn't know is that at the time I had a security system. So I had a security system where um, anytime the front door, the garage door or the back door was open, basically any entry point, anytime it was open or closed, it would send me a text message notification. So when he's telling me all this, I'm looking at my phone and I see a notification where the front door was opened and it was shut all within the same minute. So for example, if it says front door open at 1 p.m., front door closed at 1 p.m. So whatever he did was within those 60 seconds. He's telling me the story of the guy got out the car. Um, he opened the door. He went out there. Can I help you? And the guy said, um, I'm looking for, and Legion said, no, she's not here. And so the, he said the guy kind of was like, okay. And he was like, all right, thank you. And got in the car and drove off. Legion has also told me that he watched him drive off, drive out of the neighborhood, which means because of the way the house was set up, the townhouse, he would have still been outside watching this. I could be wrong, but something in me was like, that would take more than 60 seconds. So for the door to have been open and shut within the same 60 seconds, I was like, mm, mm. okay. So also what he didn't know, we didn't have a ring door camera, but my neighbor did. And her ring door camera caught my driveway. It, it, the view of the camera could see my driveway as well as her driveway. Um, and so who, whoever was coming in the door, our driveways were right next to each other. And then on the, either, on the other side of it was the grass. So it was a, it was a perfect view of my driveway. So so she, um, I texted her and I said, hey, were you home? Um, I think I texted her the next day because I said, were you home on Saturday? Da, 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 da. And she said, um, no, I wasn't. What's up? You know, everything good. And I said, um, can you look at your security system and see if there was a car that came to my house? Um, at such and such time. And I know I, I did not tell her the reason I was asking, but I was like, is there any way that your security camera caught if someone came to my house um, at this time on Saturday? She's like, yeah, sure, I'll look. And so maybe about a couple hours later, she texted me back and said, hey, I looked at the camera, but I didn't see anything. And I said, okay, by any chance did it catch if someone maybe walked up the driveway? Like maybe it wasn't a car in the driveway, but someone walked up. She said, I didn't see anything with your driveway yesterday. So I said, okay. Um, and, I, and I knew, I knew that something in me, again, um, was like, nobody came to the house. So now here we are, um, a month and a half married. And now is when I'm like, why the fuck did he make that up? Because no one came to the house. No black charger came to the house, pulled back into the driveway. Nobody got out the car and asked for me. Nobody was looking for me. So now I'm, I was sitting in the bedroom thinking through all this. And I'm like, why the fuck did he make that up? Because that's what happened. I'm looking at the text messages on my phone where he's telling me someone just came to the house looking for you, but no one came. So what was the purpose of that? And then I, and then something said to me, something in me said, he wanted to see a reaction. He, he just wanted to see the reaction. You had been too calm. And so he wanted to see a reaction. So this man gaslit me like I was Georgia natural gas just to get a reaction. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part 20 of who the fuck did I marry? All right, part 20 of who the fuck did I marry? So after the black Dodge Charger incident, um, things were, were quiet. Legion was fine. Legion slept just fine. Me, that shit played over in my head for days and days and days. Um, on one hand, I was like, I know nobody came. 
my head knew nobody came to the house my heart was like but maybe he didn't make it up so the head and the heart were absolutely playing a tug of war because again i really couldn't fathom that he was making it up but nevertheless i filed it in the back of my mind in my little filing cabinet my, my mental filing cabinet so a few weeks later we go out to eat at this restaurant in atlanta um it's a burger place and i'm going to do my, my best by the time i post this to put the name of the burger place um on the screen so we go to the burger place eat dinner everything was fine as we are leaving he says to me did i ever did, did i ever show you where my grandmother's buried this is the grandmother that passed away from COVID in 2020 and i said no i was like we haven't been over here and so he was like let me let me show you so he drives us to the cemetery which is not far from the restaurant he drives us to the cemetery goes around and around and then it comes to um like a little hill in the cemetery and he was like you see the headstone the headstone had um like a fam the family name on it and it did not have for example john david doe it just had doe okay so there were no dates on it so it, it reminded me of just a headstone where it was probably multiple family members buried underneath it that's what it reminded me of and so he was like my grandfather and my grandmother are buried there i do recall him telling me when the grandmother died in 2020 that she wanted to be buried next to his grandfather and so he told he, we're sitting in the car because we can see the headstone like on top of the hill from the car and he tells me that that is where his grandmother and grandfather are buried that he was able the family was able to get her um you know her wishes were to be buried next to the grandfather okay so as we are leaving we take a different route home so we get on the highway. If you're from Atlanta, you'll know what I'm talking about. We get on I-75 North. Um, and we're kind of just, we're just driving around, to be honest with you. But we're taking the scenic route. We get on I-75 North because the reason why I remember is because when you're on I-75 North going towards Atlantic Station, on the right-hand side, you will see the varsity. You'll see all these tall skyscraper buildings. One of the buildings has the letters NCR on the building. We, as we're coming up towards the building, he says to me, do you see the NCR building? I said, yeah. He said, the building behind it, my job bought that building. That's where we're going to have, um, we're setting up operations. And I was like, why the hell would y'all buy a condiment company in downtown Atlanta? He was like, no, we're not doing production there. It's just going to be offices. And that's where we're going to handle like the business portion. The production is still being done in Gwinnett County out in Duluth. And so I was like, oh, okay. He was like, that's where I keep the company car. So I was like, the company car. I said, aren't you supposed to be bringing a company car home? And he was like, I don't want to bring the company car home because it's Clayton County and it's a $90,000 car. And I don't, I don't want, no, nah, I don't want no problems. So he's telling me that he keeps the company car at the build, the building downtown Atlanta that's behind the NCR building. I barely could see what building he's talking about. But he was like, it's a building right behind it. And so he's telling me that that's where his office is. So I said to him, take me to your office. I know it's a Saturday, but shit, you wanted to be peas, right? So take me to your office. No, I had not been to his office simply because, again, COVID. So I was like, take me to your office. And he was like, he was like, I can. He was like, that's no problem. So do I have the other phone? I do. So y'all are in luck. So I can maybe reenact how this goes. So he gets off the exit and starts driving towards the NCR building. While he's driving towards the NCR building, he always has kept his phone in his left pocket. This is my left hand. So he pulls his phone out and he starts calling. He tells me he's calling Willie. Willie is supposed to be the head of security. So he's saying, now let me call Willie real quick to make sure that the building's open. So he proceeds, this is another phone, but he proceeds to go ahead and call Willie. He's still, we're still driving by the way. We're still driving. I'm on the phone, you know, scrolling through Facebook, trying to figure out um, some random shit, but he's, he's driving with the phone up to it. So driving with the phone, next thing I hear, hey Willie, it's Legion. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. Hey, is the building open? Now I just want to take my wife up there so she can see it and see my office. Are you up there right now? You're not? Okay, is Mr. Justin working? Okay. So is there anybody up there that can physically open the building? Because I don't think my badge is going to get me at least in the front door because of it's, it's on the weekend lock. Okay. Okay. All right, let me know. All right, thank you, Willie. Bye. Y'all see how I did that? He's having this whole conversation while I'm sitting in a passenger seat. So then he gets off the phone and he says to me, Willie is not working and Justin apparently called out sick. So the building is locked and my badge won't get us in the front door. He was like, Willie's going to see if there's someone else that can open the, that can open the front door so we can actually get in. He's like, my badge will get us on the floor, but it will not get us in the front door. <clears throat> no one ever called. So when he's getting off the highway, um, he basically turns onto Spring Street. Again, there's, this, there's all kinds of shit I distinctly remember. He turns onto Spring Street so that he can then get on 75 South so we can go home. Never saw the office that day. Um, but again, this is where he's saying that he um, keeps the company car. So when we get to part 21, I'll kind of go into detail about the whole company car a little bit more.